Hello and welcome to Talking Tolkien. Today I'm very excited to be able to talk about a new box set that's just been released by HarperCollins and this is the first of their new History of Middle-earth volumes which is the first of four sets that we'll be seeing over the course of the next 12 months. Now I talked about this a little bit in a previous video but as a brief background this um the idea behind this was to commemorate 100 years since Christopher Tolkien who was the son of J.R.R. Tolkien that to commemorate 100 years since the birth of him in, 20, in next year they um they are going to release these box sets and these gather all of the work that Christopher Tolkien did after his father's death to um to pull together all of his workings on Middle Earth and release it and and publish it so as well as the 12 volume History of Middle Earth series we also get the two works that Christopher Tolkien uh, did, which is Silmarillion and Unfinished Tales. Now, the way that worked is after his father's death in 1973, he went off, spent some time going through all his papers and released the Silmarillion, which his father always wanted to release in his lifetime, but could never quite work out how to publish him. So that was released first. After that, there was still appetite for Tolkien's work. So he went back to his father's papers, started sorting them out. And in 1980, he released Unfinished Tales. Again, loads of appetite for more work. So then Christopher Tolkien went the whole hog and um, went right back to the start of his father's work and began working on what would eventually be that 12 volume History of Middle Earth. Started in 1983, ending in 1996. So that was the legacy that Christopher Tolkien left behind. And this is a way to, um, to bring all that together. So without further ado, let's start looking at the box set. Now, one of the first things to notice about this is it comes in a nice, um, boxes we've got here and there's good and bad about this first of all the box we can see it has artwork on it which is by John Howe and that's always been a highlight of these books in their paperback variants as they've had this great artwork by by John Howe on there um, now there's good and bad about the box when when it arrived for me uh, it it was already it was sort of it had seen it was sealed with cellophane but um, it's already got a tear at the bottom, you can just see there. And that was because of the books inside. The, um, the weight of the four of them have got quite a lot of weight. And even just moving a tiny bit in the, um, in the package in there, it caused the bottom to, um, to tear a little bit. And you can just see inside there, which it is a, it is a shame. Um, but it's not the end of the world, but you've just got to be careful. I think, I think the main issue is the box itself. It, it's pretty good quality but it's not solid enough to, to house those four books. If you've got some of the, um, the other box sets, they, they seem maybe a little bit thicker, for instance, on the, um, the Lord of the Rings box set that came out um, a couple of years ago. So if it had been as thick as that, I don't think we would have had this problem. It's not flimsy, but it's not hugely um, thick and durable, which is a real shame, I think. It's a bit of a, a missed opportunity there because these are one of the, um, for, for those who've already got the books, these are one of the, um, the big selling points. But they do look splendid, I think. And you can imagine the, the four box sets with the, the backs lined up like that. It would look really good. So, yeah, mixed, mixed on that one. Then we come to the books. Now, we'll start with the Silmarillion, which I'm sure we've all been desperate for another copy of the Silmarillion on our shelves. I think I own more of this book than any book in, in Christendom. <laughs> Um, so this is what it looks like. So we've got that uh, John Howe cover art there, which looks amazing. Now, you may be wondering, why did they bother to re-release these, this and Unfinished Tales in this box set anyway? And the reason for that is they'd had some questions after the more recent re-releases of The Silmarillion, whether they could be released where the pages match um, up a lot of the, the other like indexes and, and work that's been out there. And that, that wasn't the case with the, the new ones because the text was reformatted. So to do that, they, they re-released these, which have got the same um, the same text in. So now it all lines up and you can cross-reference it all, which is great if you're researching. Um, so that's the, um, that's the cover there. We can see that. I suppose round to the back. Now, things get interesting when we remove the dust jacket and we see on the other side uh, we've got this cover, which, if you can see down here, when they were originally released, um, all of the um, History of Middle-earths used that quite, quite distinctive 
and probably now iconic cover. The Silmarillion was never ever released with that cover on, so this is a new version that you would only get if you buy these sets. I've been wondering, because the, um, the text on the front and the spine there we can see on Silmarillion, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it is um, slightly, slightly embossed and it's also shiny. So I thought, well, that, that could impact on the, the back of it if you can flip them over. But to be fair, that's not the case. Um, whereas the front's like a dull kind of finish, as you would see on a lot of the other more recent books, the back's this side is, um, is glossy, shiny cover. Um, and because it's thick, you don't see any embossing. And um, certainly for this one, for Silmarillion, I think that looks really good. So top marks there for the cover. I think that's, that's excellent. The book itself, there's not too much to talk about. We can see here on the copyright page, this hardback edition 2023, but the text itself is exactly in the format that you would um, expect going back to the, the first edition, I presume. I have to check that. Um, so we've got that. The, um, we've got the map on the inside cover. So again, whereas the first edition had a big pull out map, we don't have that. The map's is the same map of Valerian on the back and the front. I don't think there's much more to say on that. You can see there with the dust jacket off. The binding, I always get questions about the binding, whether it's um, sewn or whatever. Where you've sometimes got the ribbon at the top, and I'm not an expert in book binding, I'm afraid. Um, you haven't got that here, so I'm presuming that this is glued rather than sewn. I think for the price of the books, I don't see that as a huge issue. I've got books which are you know, tens of years old, 50, 60 years old, and, and they're still fine. Um, but if you were think, expecting a more um, luxurious, sumptuous edition, um, then you'd probably be a little bit disappointed there. But for what it is, I, I personally don't have any issues with that one. So that's the Silmarillion. Let's move on now to Unfinished Tales. Um, artwork there on the front wraps all the way around to the back. Wonderful. Um, it's not as uh, thick as some of the more recent versions of Unfinished Tales, which is no bad thing for me. Um, now, the dust jacket's an interesting one. This was released, I think it was 1992, when HarperCollins re-released some of the History of Middle-earth books. They released Unfinished Tales in the same, with the same kind of cover as these in a purple jacket, but it was only in a really limited uh, run. So there's so few copies of those. You probably see one a year for sale and they sell for hundreds because they're so rare. I haven't got one, I never picked one up. So now if you want to line up unfinished tales, you can do it much more inexpensively by using that. Again, I don't have the, the version to compare to, but to me this looks a bit darker than the um, the one that's, that was published before. But um, but it's nice to have that and it's great to have that as an option. As I say, I think that's, yeah. Really good. I'd be interested to see what people think. Would you have it as the original artwork or would you turn it around to, to this side? I suspect once you've done it once, you probably don't want to keep reversing it because it will probably just crease and wear a little bit. I think for me, I'm going to keep on this side and I'll probably swap out the um, the reading versions I've got on the shelves there with these ones and these will be the ones I'll, I'll use if I'm going to read the, the stories. The, um, the book itself, again, it's pretty traditional from what you'd expect from Finished Tales. You've got the maps at the front, um, the west of Middle Earth, yeah, at the end of the Third Age. It's the same map in both sides. Okay, there's not too much else to say on that one from Unfinished Tales. So now we'll get to the start of the history of Middle Earth. And the first volume of that is the book of Lost Tales, which for me personally is my one of my favourite um works by Tolkien. I think it's, it's wonderful. So hopefully yeah, this introduces a few more people to that. You can see the artwork there again. This was on the original paperback from like, I guess it was 1984 kind of time, uh, but it, it didn't look this good on, on the paperback. So it's really great to have this, this artwork, really distinctive. Um, okay. Two, okay, so two, a couple of issues I've, I've got just to mention on this. I don't know if this is just me with the version I've got, and maybe you can't see it that well, but if you look at the spine there, it's a little bit um, out of line. You can see it's not central. And I thought, well, maybe if I just take the dust jacket off and try and crease it along again, then it might work, but it's not It's not ideal. And also, it's maybe more apparent 
when we look at it this way. So I'm holding that straight on there. Hopefully you can see that, that even the, um, the book itself, it's not quite straight, which is a shame that that got past, past QC because that could be quite easily addressed, I think, by just shifting it a bit to the, a bit to the side. And there we have it. The, um, the book itself, and I'll come to the dust jacket shortly, the book itself has the same uh, image on the front that is in original versions of, of Book of Lost Tales. So that's good. And it looks like they're going to preserve that because in each volume, just on the first page, there was always, I think always, an illustration. So it's really good that they're, they're keeping those. The, um, the, the text itself, again, mirrors exactly what you'd find if you had the, the original version of Book of Lost Tales. This isn't the original, this is the HarperCollins 92 one, but it's effectively the same uh, as the original. Um, however, some of the text, and it's probably more apparent in the Book of Lost Tales 2 that I'll show you in a minute. Um, it, because the way it was reproduced, it wasn't like typed out and then reprinted and, and reformatted. It was probably like, not photocopied, but like scanned and, um, and reproduced for this. So because of that, the text in this isn't as clear as it was in Book of Lost Tales 1. It's probably quite difficult to show you on here, and I'll, sh I'll come back to that with Book of Lost Tales 2, because in my copy at least, it's a bit more apparent. That's the book itself. The dust jacket, again, we've got the front piece, which we can see here. If we, um, if we turn it round, we've got that, which lines up perfectly with um, the one I just showed you, like this one. Let's have a quick comparison. Because what's interesting here, um, I don't know if you can see that much on here, and I've also got a shiny cover on this one, which maybe doesn't help too much, but the um, the new version is quite a lot darker than the blue that you've got on the um, the older versions. I don't know how apparent that is, but um, or on the camera, but it is noticeably darker on the new one, which I suppose is just the way it was printed, but um, I was a bit surprised by that, especially because some of the later volumes are darker, but, but we'll see. It, it looks fine. Uh, so that's that's that cover there. Book of Lost Tales, part one done. And finally to the second volume of Book of Lost Tales, originally um, released 1984. Yes, uh, as we can see on the copyright page there. Um, this one, again, the book itself, like all the others, it's black outside of the dust jacket. This one, the spine is perfectly aligned. So again, even more frustrating that they couldn't do it for the, the first volume, but um, just want to raise it. Now, the, the front image in here is the, um, a page from the tale of Tenubial, which again was reproduced in the, um, the old versions we've got here. Let's check if it's glossy or not in the old one. Hmm. Curiously, it's not um, it's not in this one. I'd have to go back and look in the first edition, which I've got locked away <laughs> now. Um, but this one doesn't actually have an image at the front. I thought they all did. Uh, let me know in the comments if you've got first edition. Check it out and see if you have actually got this um, this page from the Tale of Tenuvial there, because this isn't in the um, the nineteen ninety two version. Interesting. The dust jacket, I'll come back to text in a minute. The, the dust jacket, again, this is much more accurate to the um, to the cover of the, the old versions. You can imagine they'll, they'll look really good all lined up on the shelf. I can't remember if I showed you the cover. There you are. Okay. So, yeah, probably my biggest gripe, it's not that big. Apart from the box there, that, that's a bit upsetting. This is probably quite hard to, to see, but some of the text inside, it's not consistently dark or light. So um, yeah, it's just a little bit disappointing there to, to see that, but, um, but generally good. So yeah, the text, uh, it's not a huge deal. And I think if you're familiar, you know, this is the, the older version, 1992 version. 
So the text is just a little bit clearer in there just because of the way it's reproduced. I don't think it's a problem to read and I don't think it impacts on the reading of it. Just something to be aware of. Okay, so a couple of final bits. The dust jackets do have um, a unique barcode on there. Whether that's a sign that in the future they might be releasing them separately, it might be. So if you were just after the two Book of Lost Tales, for instance, then there might be benefit to waiting. Or it might not, it might depend on sales. Um, it is a shame about the thickness of the box. You would hope that maybe in the future they, they could build slightly more sturdy boxes. I'm sure they'll have had a lot of returns as well on these. I'm not going to return this, but um, you can see why people might. Uh, it comes down to the value on this. The, um, the RRP on this is £100 for the box set, so for each book, £25, which is all right. It's maybe a bit excessive. I know when it came on pre-order, I think it was about £61 for the four. So if you're looking at £15, that's, that's a good price. I think currently it's about £90, which is, is, is about right, I think. Um, you could you could moan about, not moan, you could criticise potentially the fact the, about the, the binding on here. But, you know, you could go right back to something like this thing, which was the, um, the Peoples of Middle Earth, which got quite a lot of value now because they didn't make any of them. But even the binding on this was nothing, nothing amazing, you know. So I wouldn't get too, too concerned about that. Um, so what do I think? I think it's, I would recommend it. I think if you haven't got the books or you're after like solid reading copies that are going to last a long time and um, that look really good on the shelf, then I think it's, um, yeah, a box set that's well worth looking at. I think when they all come out and you've got the, the whole set lined up on the shelf, um, then, then that's great, especially with some of the later books where you couldn't realistically get them in hardback without paying like ridiculous amounts. And even though HarperCollins did a print on demand where you could order them directly from the publishers for some of these later volumes, they um, they were still about £40 for each, each copy of those books. So when you think for pretty much the, the cost of two of those books, you're getting a box set with four in, then uh, it's not too bad, especially nowadays with inflation. Okay, I've probably spoken enough there. I think I've covered everything that I wanted to cover. Uh, overall, I'm impressed. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. If you enjoy the video, please feel free to like and subscribe or make a comment. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll see you for the next one. We've got um, the letters of J.R.R. Tolkien has recently been updated with this one. So uh, I haven't fully gone through. I wanted to compare them, but uh, even if you look at like how, how thick they are together, there's quite a lot more in this one. I just haven't had time to go through it yet. So um, we've got that to look forward to soon, hopefully. Uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.